Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Elizabeth Ham, and I offer writing tips and encouragement to those uh, writers and aspiring authors, as well as uh, I will be starting a segment for um, those who are grieving and going through that process in their life. Um, if that's something that you think that you might like, go ahead and click subscribe. And without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so this video is going to be a little bit different. Um, I just wanted to sit here and talk to you uh, about something that has been on my mind and something that I personally have struggled with um, for quite some time. And that is about being realistic in your dreams and goals and um, pursuing those things that you uh, dream about versus giving up and uh, following the facts per se. Um, yesterday I was listening to Haley Bascom, I think that's how you pronounce her name, on her uh, channel and uh, she had made a whole video about this and I was at work and so I was typing away and listening at the same time and I wanted to stand up and like shout like this girl like is saying everything that I have been thinking for such a long time and that is about being realistic with your goals. Um, the reason why I say this is because uh, for so long, I feel that um, I have been, you know, misunderstood for the goals that I have had. I remember uh, when I was in high school and I was getting ready to um, pick a college. I remember telling my parents, you know, this is what I want to do. I know I want to major in this and I know that I want to do that and I had no doubt about it, right? And I remember being told, well, you know, college costs money and um, my parents were phenomenal. You know, they helped me through college. But I remember thinking, you know, I'm not giving up on this dream. And as a young person, 17 years old, I knew exactly how I wanted my life to be, right? I knew that um, I wanted to go to college, graduate. I knew I wanted to get married and have a family. And that was my dream at that time. Um, I was more of a you know, shyer person. And I just knew that I wanted to have a family and raise kids, right? But as I went to college... Um, I continued to want to dream that dream and it wasn't until I graduated and, and you know and I was married and had my family actually it was after I had my last child back in 2007 um, I knew that there was more you know to this life that I was supposed to be doing um, I realized that I you know after my dream and my goal of having kids, um, I had no other dreams and goals. <laughs> it's like, what now? And as a mother who is sleep deprived and raising young babies, my kids are two years apart, um, and I worked a part-time job as well, I just, I just knew that there was more that I wanted to do. And I remember talking to someone who was one of my mentors at the time, and he told me to start a blog. He said, Elizabeth, you write very well, and um, I think that you should start this blog. And I said, well, what do I have to offer people? And he said, just blog about everyday life. Just blog. It doesn't matter. Um, just do it. And so I did. And I realized that, you know, along with the poetry that I had been writing all those years, that I liked helping people. And so um, I still have the blog. I've not been as active on it um, lately, but I realized that I loved composing blogs that gave insight 
to things that I was learning along my journey, my personal and spiritual journey. And I realized that I loved to write, but it wasn't until 2012 or 13, I had another writing friend who spoke to me. Actually, she contacted me out of the blue. We had gone to college together, and she contacted me and said, Hey, Liz, what are you doing with your life? And we caught up, and she invited me to start to join her for NaNoWriMo. And I said, well, I don't write manuscripts. I don't write fiction or anything. I just write poetry and blogs. And she was like, you know what, Liz? Why don't you try to expand your horizon? I think you'd be really great. You know, I've read, you know, you've shared with me some of the stuff, you know, when we were in college that you wrote, and you write very well. So she encouraged me to do that. And I went into it with the mindset that this is hard. I'm not going to make it. And that's it. And I didn't. So for, I'm not sure, I forget how many NaNoWriMo's I actually did where I did not make it. I did not win. And um, I don't know, something clicked inside of me because I also, I started journaling while I was in college. No, actually I started journaling when I was in high school and that went all through college and stuff. And um, I, something clicked. And I said, you know what? I can write. And the more I write, the better I'll become. And I started having these dreams. And I would tell people, you know, I'm going to be a published author. I'm going to be a well-known author. I'm going to write books. My books will be on the shelf. And um, I'm going to go on book tours. And I'm going to meet people and do book signings. And... Um, I just, I can't count the number of people who said, oh, that's fine and dandy, you know, a starving artist, you, they don't really make very much, you know, and then I even encountered someone when I reached, when I reached out to her, she was a friend, and I know that she meant well, but she said to me, you know, I don't think that you should write as your career because writing as your career, it will become something that you begin to resent and you'll hit plateaus and you'll hit brick walls and you won't be able, it'll just be very frustrating and something that used to be something that you loved will become something that you resent and hate and you're doing this as a hobby. So if I were you, I would keep your day job and just write on the side. So I adapted that mindset. I can't tell you how many times I adapted mindsets of different people in my life. And without realizing it, I was allowing them to tell me what I should be doing. Some of it was good. I am thankful for the friends and for my mentor who pushed me to start writing. I'm grateful for that. But here's the thing. Only you will know what you're supposed to be doing. Only you can see a vision of what you want in life. And just recently, I have learned to start speaking things that may sound so extreme and so ridiculous into the universe, but you know what? They're my dreams, then they're my goals. And who is anyone to tell me that that's unrealistic? No, I don't want writing to just be my hobby. Yes, for the longest time I did it on the side. And what's your hobby? Writing, reading. But the truth of the matter is I wanted more than that and I was settling because I listened to one person or another and they meant well. I'm not talking bad about them at all. But my whole thing is I knew what I wanted and I allowed someone to tell me. If I had allowed you know, my parents to persuade me to go to vocational school or something else instead of going to college, I wouldn't have graduated with my degree. You know, I knew what I wanted and I knew that I was persistent towards pursuing it. 
Um, the one thing that, the one quote that stands out to me that Haley mentioned in her uh, video where she got this exactly from Will Smith and then she linked his video which I will link her video and then his video in the comments below and you can feel free to go listen to them and just listening to Will Smith talk about you know being realistic is the path to mediocrity I don't know I have never been realistic with anything I have not I have really reached for the sky I remember in high school I wanted to be valedictorian and there was no way on this earth that I was not going to be valedictorian and I fought for that now I had to study and work really hard there were some people I went to school with who they just got it they didn't have to study they could get any grade they wanted but I had to work so hard and these were things in my life that I pushed to pursue. When this all clicked in my mind, I began winning the NaNoWriMo's. I have a manuscript sitting at 50,000 words. It's a manuscript. I have it from top to bottom. It needs a lot of work. I need to add to it. Um, I am going to be starting that soon. And that would be my first novel. But for so long as well, I began to push away my poetry. I loved doing it. But it seemed like it was some something that just old people did in the past. You know, it was something from the Romantic era with Shakespeare and all that. And But I loved Maya Angelou. But of course, she has passed away. And I didn't know any poets my age. Honestly, I didn't. Um, it wasn't until I got onto the YouTube community that I began to realize that I was finding more and more poetry and people my age and younger. And then the spoken poetry really, really struck me to my core. And I realized that I was sitting on a talent of mine that I was actually hiding from embarrassment because of what people had told me, no one writes poetry anymore. And these were dreams that I had and things that I wanted to do. And again, it was my fault because I allowed people to tell me about something. Oh, Elizabeth, you bury your head in the sand. Quit being like the ostrich, come back to earth. You live in this cloud, you live in this fantasy land. Some of us live in reality. Well, guess what? I do live in reality, but I also have dreams and goals and ambitions, and I feel that that is built in every one of us. And some of us, if, if we're saying that, oh, I live in reality, I think what's covering that is fear. The reality is they're afraid to launch out. I've not been afraid. And you know what? Even if I was afraid, I... I have been starting to launch out afraid. I'm telling you, even starting this YouTube channel, it's something I have wanted to do for probably six or seven months. And I said, I don't like seeing myself behind a video or, you know, a camera. But I started it. And that has been my dream. No one told me to do it. I'm not doing it because it's the trend. I have a dream to sit here and help others. I have a dream to be an author, to be a published author. I am a poet. And there's nothing wrong with speaking all of that out into the universe. And along with that comes the vision boards, visualizing it, seeing it in front of you in picture form. You see it in your mind, but sometimes it helps to see it tangibly on a vision board. And that's another thing that I'm going to be starting. So I know that I have been rambling and talking nonstop about this. And I hope I haven't lost your attention. But I just wanted to encourage you. There might be one of you out there where you are struggling in this department. You are having people around you telling you that you can't do it. That's unrealistic. Or you might not. You might not have told anyone about your dreams or goals or desires. 
but you might be the one telling yourself this is unrealistic. This is just far-fetched, come back to reality. But the truth of the matter is, like Will Smith said in his video, you know, it was unrealistic to put a metal in the air and fly people over the ocean. But yet the Wright brothers didn't give up and an airplane was made. Look at these inventions that we have, electricity, running water. People probably laughed these people to scorn or they said, oh, there, there Edison is at it again. There he goes with make, trying to make the light bulb again. Why won't that guy give up? But you know what? When it's when you, right when you give up, you could have been trying one more time and that could have been the time that you got it. So I want to encourage you to not give up on your dreams and not give up on the future that you see. Speak those things into existence. Use positive affirmations. I'm a firm believer of that. I have been doing that. Um, that's one thing that my dad did teach me uh, before he passed away. Uh, the few years before that, he would say, speak those things into existence that, that aren't as though they are. And I started doing that. And then there was time, there were times where I said, this is silly. But the truth of the matter is it's not silly. And things have come to pass in my life. Whether you're saying that you can't or can, those things will happen. If you say, I can't do this, you're not going to do it. I promise you that much. So that is my encouragement to you. Um... Like I said, if you like my channel, go ahead and click subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions or if there's anything that you would like me to discuss on a future video, just put it in the comments below. At the end of this video, you can find where um, I am on Twitter and Instagram as well as my email address. And I hope you have a good day. Bye. Bye.